proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Guys, like in all seriousness, if you don't apply um, high levels of organization in your processes, then your delivery is going to be uh, pretty average at best. How old are you gonna be before you start to experience life like you want it? I wanna tell you right now, whether you like it or not, there is a better way to do business. Hi everyone, welcome to the Business for Builders podcast. My name is Max, I'm your host, and uh, I'm the CEO, CEO here at Smith & Sons Canada. I'm also the founder at EliteBusinessAdvisory.com. Uh, great to have you with us. If you're a first time listener, welcome, uh, appreciate it. And maybe not, you know, maybe you've listened to the last three. Maybe you were a new listener on the first one and you've uh, you just stuck with me. So I appreciate you doing that. If you're a long time listener, I appreciate your ear. Uh, your feedback is my oxygen. And uh, speaking of feedback, feel free to jump on your uh, your podcast channel of choice and uh, leave us a bit of a um, leave us a bit of a review. That would be great. Um, helps us get the word out. Reduce that fifty percent failure rate. And um, sure, if you're on uh, YouTube watching this, great to have you with us. And uh, you can leave a comment, like and subscribe, all that sort of good stuff as well. Um, all right, we are in a three part series. Before we get started, don't forget go check out <clears throat> Business for Builders VIP on Facebook. Answer the questions, and if you're a good sort, I'll let you in. Great place for, for a community of, of builders and general contractors. Um, you know, a great place for some collaboration, you know, as well as camaraderie. So get across there, and uh, look, if you want to email me, max at elitebusinessadvisory.com, or get across to the elite, uh, elitebusinessadvisory.com if you want to investigate, uh, you know, some customized coaching for contractors and uh, maybe book a consultation, get on a Zoom call with me. We'll have a quick 30-minute strategy session, talk about what you're doing in your business, and uh, I'll bring as much value to the table as I can in 30 minutes and uh, help you on your way, and then maybe uh, you'll learn more a bit about what we do as a, as a, as a coaching organisation and, um, you know, really want you to profit more in 24. Righto, third part uh, to this series, and this is really rounding out um, what we're doing in the site meeting as it relates to chatting with clients about the pre-construction agreement. So if you've just got this episode right now and you've just found it, I'd encourage you to go back to episode 178 because that's where I gave a very big introduction about what we're doing. And so 178, 179, and 180 is all about the site meeting, what we're talking about as it relates to the design plan and process, quantity takeoff services, bill of quantities, and then the overarching or the, the you know, the foundation uh, pre-construction agreement that is separate from the construction agreement and how we go about talking about that. So I'm going to round out, you know, some of the, you know, the, probably the last part of the conversation as it relates to the pre-construction agreement in the following four points. And really the one that I'm going to start with is just a follow on from the last point of episode 179, um, you know, where we're talking about uh, subcontract and supply coordination. Um, you know, what we want to talk about to clients is we, we want to make sure that we're demonstrating the value uh, as it relates to everything that's, that's talked about in the pre-construction agreement process so that when we talk about what the investment required in the pre-construction agreement is that they go, oh, Max has told me about this mountain of work that's got to be done and the price that he wants is about this. And so just so you guys and gals know, if, if you didn't hear it in the last, I might not have mentioned it, but normally like one of my guys in Smith & Sons is quoting on, uh, or is about to move into a, uh, a uh, design, excuse me, a pre-construction agreement with a client. It's over a half a million dollar addition. Um, and we're working on about a 1%. So his fee to oversee and orchestrate the process for, as it relates to the pre-construction uh, design plan and price process uh, is going to be about $5,000. Now, on top of that is going to be a bunch of design services like engineers, interior designers, uh, soil tests, land survey, things like that. Um, and of course, you've got, uh, obviously, once you hit city or council approval, um, those costs are all going to be on top of that. Um, and so what that does is, is you know, just while I'm on that, um, what we do in our process is that we, we come up with the, the pre-construction agreement as the job in our uh, software, in our job management software. And then everything that we add to that job, i.e. interior designer, uh, concept drawings, architectural, engineering, soil test, survey, uh, building approvals, they are all actually are going to be what we call either variations or change orders to that core job, 
okay? Now, the upside with that is what we say to clients is, look, you know, our, our, the investment that's required go, that goes to us is for us to orchestrate the overall process. But all of, all of this network of designers, uh, the design services like I just outlined, they are all going to be part of our network, but they're going to be passed on to you at cost. So we don't want to make any profit on top of those services because we, you know, we're, we're builders. We don't really, we, we just have to do the pre-construction agreement and the design plan and, and price process because it's a necessary evil, especially as it relates to fixed price. Cost plus, maybe not so much, but, you know, we, we, that's, we don't do cost plus. 99% of our work is fixed price. And so, you know, the clients go, okay, now you're going to understand, they understand that we have a network which they can really uh, tap into and get the best bang for the back because I know best bang for their buck because I know that, you know, designers that work for us do give us a little bit of a discount because of the fact that we use and reuse that service over and over again and we can actually pass that on to the client. Um, And so that's good for the client. Now, what I want you to understand too, and, and I would always urge you to seek legal advice on this, but what we want to do is we want clients to utilize our network and we want those clients, we prefer that our clients pay <clears throat> those services directly. Now, that is just because it doesn't get any more uh, you know, uh, more transparent than that as it relates to design services. And there is some liability that's removed. We don't want to complicate the process we want the architect to be paid directly by the homeowner. Um, now, if you choose to have, you know, the client pay pay you and then you pay the engineer, I, I think that's, you know, the fact that there is no markup being applied to those services, I, I, think, I don't think that's preferable, but I'll leave that up to you. You just seek your own legal counsel on that and, um, you know, really um, thrash that out with, with those guys. But, you know, further on to my last point of the last podcast, we want to... Uh, Point number nine, so I've got another four points to round this out. Point number nine, data compilation and proposal preparation. So we've got to, once we get all the information to the the, the suppliers and the subcontractors, we've then got to get that data back. We've got to gather the data and then ensure its completeness and its accuracy. Guys, the worst thing that I, I really hate this from suppliers, but, and I understand why they do it, but they go all due care, but no responsibility. You cannot hang your home hardware uh, on the fact that you've given them a plan and they've done, let's say, a frame and floor system takeoff, but more mainly, mainly framing where there's studs and there's headers and things like that. And then all of a sudden you get to the job and you're 200 studs short or whatever. They'll just say, look, you know, all due care was taken, but no responsibility. Here's the bill for the extra 200 studs. Um, so what you've got to do as a builder is just go around there and you know try and work out lineal feet and 1.5 studs per lineal foot. Or if you're in Australia, I think it's three studs per meter. Um, Australia, New Zealand, uh, wherever they're doing metric, and and you know just do a rough count on you as a builder and, and me being a, a qualified carpenter. Um, you know that's that's easy for me to do, but you really want to just assess and make sure. So that's another part because not only have you got to gather the data from the uh, suppliers and subcontractors, but you also have to ensure its completeness and its accuracy. And then you've got to prepare a comprehensive proposal for presentation to the client, incorporating all of the design and all the pricing details. Now, um, guys, look, you've got to put the look. These guys that just do one page presentations just blow my mind. You know. I think what we what for us we use Build Exact currently, and we're able to do the estimate and then add certain line items straight into the specifications sheet. Now we've got to step back, and this is the other challenge. You know, to get the subbies and the suppliers to do the quote, we've got to work the selection sheet. So that's something that I really didn't outline in the previous episodes. Is that you've got to find those things that have aesthetic value, put a generic term on a selection sheet, and then get the client to confirm exactly what type of door handles, um, you know, what type of interior doors do they want, what kind of base and case or skirting and architrave, what shelving systems do they want, what paint colours, you know, what floor coverings, what countertops, what cabinet door, you know, finishes that they want, like all of their tap sets and every, all of this has got to be compiled. So that's, that. you know, in the previous point, uh, sorry, you know, um, the, the compilation of the data, this is what we've got to do. The selection sheet forms a large part of that process and that takes a lot of work because without it, I can't get a quote from a supplier for what I just outlined, okay? So this is whilst I'm talking to the client, I'm rattling through my process. 
okay? So this has not got to do with the workflow, it's got to do with the process. This is the process that it takes in the pre-construction phase it's for me to understand the, the project specifics, to be able to get those costed, to be able to compile the data and get it back to you in a proposal format. Now, some of the, you know, our, our proposals, now in our specifications, you can also add a picture. I would urge you to find a way where if you've got, an, uh, you've got something that has aesthetic value that the client could have cho that has chosen to have some way of introducing or including in your specification presentation a picture of that item. Now, what that means for us in BuildExact, we can only get probably three photos per page. So if I'm printing one-sided and there's 30, um, you know, specifications or more, you know, that's 10 pages of specification items. So that's on top of the cover sheet. That's that's on top of the quote itself. Now, uh, just a side note, in my proposal, I don't break it down into categories other than I break it down into the specifications. I don't show category or section prices, certainly not line item prices. All I show is the value up front, the specifications uh, with the pictures, and then there is terms and conditions, and then there's a price. Now, people say to me, Max, why can't I just see all the pricing? And I say, because I've got good deals with my suppliers and arrangements with my, my subcontractors, that's proprietary information. And because we offer you a fixed price in advance with a list of specifications and inclusions, um, I'm unable to share that data with you. But this is what you get, and this is the overall price, and this is the project duration. How do you feel about that? So I don't want to just say, no, I can't give it to you. But at the end of the day, we are taking the risk, and I think we should. This whole cost plus thing, where clients basically are on the hook, they're writing their builders a blank check, they assume all the risk, and there is none really upon the builder. I'm flipping that around, and we're saying, right, if you want the security and peace of mind, <coughs> then... Um, that that there's a premium to pay for that. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Got any questions? Email me, max at elitebusinessadvisory.com or get across to elitebusinessadvisory.com. Hit the book of consultation and we'll catch up with the Zoom call and we can jam around anything that you want um, as it relates to running a construction company. All right. Point number 10. Um, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, responsibility and demands on the contract. So, uh, the sub point here is highlight the significant responsibility to the client that's placed on you, the contractor, to orchestrate the entire process. What you're, what you're not trying to do is just be a drama queen. What you're trying to do is outline exactly what it is that you have a responsibility that's upon you to fulfill to serve the clients at the highest level and demonstrate all of those um, you know, all those moving parts and the fact that we're dealing with 20 or 30 sub trades and suppliers and all of the, the BS that goes along with it, there is a challenge there. So when, if we can highlight the responsibility that's on me to communicate at the highest level, to make sure that I get the, 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 the appropriate amount of information from the client through the selection process, the concept plan process, to then have that handed off to subcontractors and suppliers and getting that data back, the client starts to understand that the design and planning and pricing process, the pre-construction process, pre process, you know, I've got the hiccups, is quite challenging. Gosh, it's all against us today. We've got flat batteries and me got the hiccups and everything. So let's try and get this, let's get through this. Okay, second dot point of point number 10, uh, emphasize the demand for excellence in managing the complex coordination of suppliers, subcontractors, and project details. Guys, this is why... I, I think, you're right, maybe this one will make it to, to TikTok, but this is why I think most builders go to Cost Plus is because they don't want to do any of the work. What I just read out then, um, emphasize the demand to the, you know, ex express the, 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 the nature or the demand for excellence in me managing the complex coordination of suppliers, subcontractors, and project details. That takes work. Most builders and general contractors, and this is nothing against you. I don't sit, a, sit in a seat of judgment. I'm just saying that they want to get construction going because that's where they make money because they haven't figured out how to you know, uh, de demonstrate the value in the pre-construction agreement process, the design plan and price, and therefore they can't put any kind of fee or investment that's required against that because they don't know how to demonstrate value. So guys, this is part of the deal. You've got to demonstrate the value. And it is, you know, it's a very complex process to, to have to coordinate subs and suppliers to make sure the project details that you're forwarding to them have been gathered from the client in a very coordinated and a very organized fashion. 
that takes work, okay? Um, but I'm telling you, like I said in the previous point, is there is a premium that is paid because of the work that we do in the project, but also there is an investment required for me to go and do that work prior to uh, you know going to construction. So that's point number 10. Point number 11, pre-construction agreement itself, right? So what we want to do is we want to discuss the importance of the pre-construction agreement, which is kind of what we've just outlined uh, previously. And then we want to outline the, the necessity for the client to invest in the pre-construction program, including quotations, liaising with preferred partners and facilitating permit application. Um, look, I, you know, for us to do what we do, um, you know, I think a lot of us know that we're in construction, we're in renovations, remodeling, new homes, customized homes, what, 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 whatever. But ultimately, we're, we're in the business of providing clients with certainty, which gives them peace of mind and security. Okay. And that is essentially what we sell. You know, sure, we're like every other builder, we provide construction services, but the way we go about, um, you know, presenting uh, us as a building company to homeowners is that because we work fixed price, this is what we do. We remove the uncertainty. Nobody likes surprises, only on their birthdays. But ultimately, this system, if we are going to take the risk, there needs to be a return. That's just simple business. If people say to me, Max, you're more expensive than the guy down the road, I don't even want to know what the guy down the road's doing because I know what the guy down the road's doing anyway before they tell me. He's underquoted it. He's thrown a cost plus number out. He's going to woo them into a cost plus contract. And then they're going to get three quarters through the, the project and they're already going to be over budget. Like seen it. I've seen it. Been there, seen that, right? So what I'm focused on is demonstrating my value. And then here is the price. People buy Kias every day. If you've got a Kia, nothing personal. But I'm just making the comparison that is <clears throat> that people also buy Porsches every day. So why do the people that prefer a Porsche, why don't they buy a Kia? because they want they prefer they want that level of experience. They want to impress people in and around their, you know, sphere of influence. Like they that that is that's what they enjoy to drive. They like high performance. That's what they want. So give clients what they want, but make sure that you are are, are not desperate, that you are deliberate, okay? And that you are uh, pricing jobs that are profitable considering what your business costs you to manage projects on a daily basis as well. So um <clears throat> Now, that, that, that is, that's a necessary thing because you and I can't work for free. And look, just side note, the pre-construction agreement actually works as a tripwire. If someone is just using you as a price checker, they're not going to spend you know, $500 or $5,000 with you in the pre-construction phase, okay? So just, you know, if, if somebody doesn't want to comply with that, then we can't do business because you know, nobody works for me for free. Like everyone wants a dollar for their time. And so why do we spend 30 to 50 hours or more quoting a project and all of a sudden the client sends us a one line or a one paragraph email saying, sorry, I've worked with someone else or we're not going ahead with the project. It's too much money. Like, why didn't we figure that out in the first meeting? And that was what we talked about in episode one. Okay, um, so that was the pre-construction agreement, point number 11. Point 12 <clears throat> is ensuring successful project completion. So we want to reinforce that the detailed process is designed to ensure a successful project outcome. So we adhere to the design, the timeline and budget requirements. So, you know, I think that, um, you ready for this one? Uh, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. If that is not the most amount of P's in, in a row, I don't know what it is, but guys, like in all seriousness, if you don't apply um, high levels of organization in your processes, then your delivery is going to be uh, pretty average at best because the, the construction phase and execution, I believe, like considering the fact that most guys have got relative good construction understanding, is going to be a reflection or an outworking of what you've done in the, uh, the pre-sales design plan and process, a design, design plan and pricing process. So if you are diligent and you are very micro focused as far as you know a lot of clients will want to get started when i haven't done the selection sheet and that's just not on it's not how we roll it's not how we bounce we literally want to have it now if there's one or two items maybe maybe but why would i go to all this work in the selection process and not insist that we have all the ducks lined up because then what i can do is i can go to work putting purchase orders together and and really organizing sub trades making sure they're on point making sure my project's schedule is 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 actually accurate like 
you know, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Okay, guys, nobody wants to hit the job site and be looked upon as a piss poor performer. That is not what we want. And so if you want to be better at delivering the product and you know you've got good construction skills, it's going to have something, you know, there is going to be something that's going awry within your uh, you know, pre-construction phase. And so, look, guys, that that's an overall perspective, you know, and there's a bunch of other stuff there that I'm thinking about, you know, when we do get that that contract to build after we've gone through all of that pre-construction uh, agreement phase, then, you know, there's, you know, what do we do? We activate. Now, just, just to finish on this, guys, understand this, that uh, being a project manager and being a superintendent or a supervisor or a project supervisor is di- they have different roles. Like I would say to my building company owners that if you, your priorities is to obviously business administration, of course, but frontline sales um, and project management. So when you get the agreement and you go and do a, you know, you do up a contract and you have that client sign and there's a down payment, you are now responsible for uh, organizing the, the, the uh, you know, ensuring that the, the Gantt chart is done so that the project schedule is organized and then, of course, you know, you're in it for procuring the services of um, sub-trades, organising their schedules, and also with sub-suppliers. Uh, so purchase orders are a big deal. I think you've got to have those established um, so you can start the ordering process. And then subcontract agreements with your subcontractors, either job-specific or, you know, an overall subcontract agreement, and then having purchase orders being dispatched to, you know, those subcontractors as well as a minimum is super important. So... Um, you know, there's there's so much more to learn, guys, that I can possibly do in a single podcast. I've tried to string the last three together. Hopefully, it's come across in an organized, comprehensive fashion, although it be a bullet point overarching macro. Um, there's so much micro that goes into it. And guys, this is why any type of customized coaching for contractors really has to bridge the gap between, you know, the, the, the administration side, the sales side, and then the execution on site, and of course, the monitoring of the metrics and the performance of the business whilst we're, you know, in it is so important. And, you know, if you're sitting out there and you're feeling like an island, I know, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. But what I found is that, you know, guys that I've got coming into elite business right now, they are guys that really do enjoy the me bringing awareness to where they're, you know, what, what's going on, um, where they're lacking, and then bringing some education to, you know, really compensate around that gap uh, within their business program. And then there's the accountability. I've had lots of guys go, Max, I've got all kinds of books and textbooks, and I've watched all kinds of YouTube videos like this. Um, what I need is accountability. And that's the final phase. Those three things is what I bring to the table. So look, um, if you can't do it, Silver Bullet Academy on the EliteBusinessAdvisory.com website is a place to go. Um, and, you know, if you can, then definitely you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck out of, you know, you and I working together. I really have got limited positions available now. I've had a really great, um, you know, great interest from a lot of people. I've, you know, now got four, I've got, I've got clients in four countries, and so it's an exciting, uh, it's a very rewarding thing for me to do. So please don't miss out because, you know, I, I coach every one of my clients at this stage. I'm not in the process of building a firm uh, with Elite Business Advisory. It might be something that I'll do down the track. But for right now, um, you know, you're going to be dealing with me. And so um, limited spots are available, guys. So get across there. Have a chat to me. No obligation, no charge. You can talk to me one-on-one just like this. Um, and we can talk about your business and some of the restraints and some of the constraints on you at the moment. And if I can send you out with some information that's going to help you specifically relating to your business, I would love to do that. So don't be afraid, and then uh, maybe you can come back around. Get on the Silver Bullet program, the academy there. Basically, your investment requires a couple of cases of beer, and you're off to the races. But, um, you know, be sure to make sure you understand the concept around the more you learn, the more you earn, uh, and accountability is absolutely a, a big deal. So guys and girls, have a great day. Have a great week. Make sure you are uh, pricing jobs profitably. Make sure your execution is on point. Make sure you're watching your numbers. You've got to know your numbers. Go build that kick-ass business, and I will see you in the next episode. Cheers, big ears.